Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about some prize picks plays, uh, some player props I like for week five of the NFL. Um, you know, we got a big Sunday slate ahead. I'm going to be mainly focusing on the, the Sunday games. Um, you know, not really going to be talking about Monday Night Football. I'll have a separate video uh, out for that, you know, later in the week. Uh, but we're going to talk about some plays I like for Sunday. I got three picks that we're going to share in this video. I'm uh, going to talk through these three props. We're going to share why I like them, um, you know, like we always do. But before we do get started with the video, as always, guys, if you enjoy these prospects videos, if they do help you out, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you have not yet, going to be uploading, you know, prospects videos all NFL season. Trying right now to upload at least three prospects videos a week, and we've been doing that so far. Usually I make a video for the Monday night games, the Thursday night games, and I make a video for the full Sunday slate. Um, and I'm going to be uploading prospects Picks videos as well once NBA season gets here. And the NBA regular season starts in about two weeks. So you guys are definitely going to want to be subscribed. Make sure you've got those notifications on so that way you never miss out on any of my new videos. Um, and if you actually have not signed up for Price Picks yet, you can actually sign up with my promo code, promo code NOAH. Price Picks will match your first deposit up to $100 when you do sign up with my promo code. And Price Picks is a player prop based DFSI. It is you know, very simple and easy to use. You're just taking more or less on a player's projection. Um, they have a lot of projections and a lot of different categories for NFL. Prospex does offer a ton of other sports as well, so you can take a look at their MLB board. We got the MLB playoffs going on right now. We got college football in full swing. They have college football available, PGA, soccer, esports, um, and you know, obviously NBA starting up soon too. So definitely, you, you guys should be playing on Prospex if you're not yet. As always, you can tell the picks I give out in my videos. You can make some you know, picks for yourself. Um, you can do multi-sport entries. It's you know a lot of fun. Definitely recommend you guys get over there, sign up with that promo code NOAH, uh, so that way you get that deposit bonus when you do sign up. And another thing, if you guys enjoy these YouTube videos, if they help you out a lot, and if you want to get more prospects plays from me, I do provide additional prospects plays over on Patreon. I also post uh, additional DFS content over there as well. So if you uh, play DFS on DraftKings, um, on Yahoo, I do provide DFS content for both DraftKings and for Yahoo, and I do give out prospects plays as well. Um, you can see all that I provide on Patreon. $20 per month gets you access to everything that I provide. Also gets you access to our Discord chat uh, where you can talk to me. You can talk to any other members. I'm always in Discord to help you guys out, to answer questions, um, just to chat you know, about sports and stuff. So if you guys want to become a Patreon member, it's also linked down below in the description. You can see all that I do offer over there. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. I guess we can, uh, we can recap our plays from our last video. We did give out two picks for Thursday Night Football for the Colts and Broncos game. And it was obviously annoying. If you tell the two picks, you know what happened. We took Melvin Gordon's over receiving yards. That hit very, very easily. Pretty sure it hit on like maybe the second or third play of the game. Melvin Gordon got like a 14-yard catch. But the one play that did not hit was Naeem Hines. We took his over receiving yards, and he obviously got injured. He got injured on the third play of the game, which was super unfortunate because Hines, he was really you know, involved early on in the game. Um, first play of the game, they threw him a screen pass. Unfortunately, he dropped it. And then on the third play of the game, he caught another pass for like five yards, and but that was the play that he got injured on. Um, he clear, you know, he was stumbling. He was, it looked like he got a concussion, kind of similar to what Tua had. Um, and I knew, you know, after Tua, what happened to Tua, they weren't gonna let Naeem Hines back in the game. So tough, man. You know, losing on an injury is never fun. It's, but it's part of the game. You know, when you play NFL DFS or you play, you bet player props. I mean, injuries are gonna happen. It's part of the game. Um, but we'll move on to Sunday. Hopefully we can uh, cash out on all three of our plays for the Sunday slate. Uh, the first play we're going to talk about is a fantasy score prop. And one of the reasons I do like playing on prize picks, they offer fantasy score. Basically, you can take a player to have more or less than their fantasy point projection. Prize picks does offer, uh, or they do make fantasy point projections. And one of their projections really stood out to me that I thought was too low. And it's in this uh, London game. This is actually a game that starts at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time on Sunday morning. So I did want to post this or post this video to YouTube. You know, prob I'm probably going to post this video on Saturday, early Saturday. So you should have plenty of time to get this play in. And it's going to be Saquon Barkley to have more than 16 fantasy points. I just think this projection is way too low. I mean, you look at what Saquon's done this season. Through their first four games, he had 33 fantasy points week one against Tennessee. He had a tough week offensively against uh, the Panthers. He wasn't very efficient on the ground, only put up 11 fantasy points. That was definitely a floor game from Saquon. And then the last two weeks, he's gone over this line with 22 fantasy points against the Cowboys and 18 fantasy points last week against Dallas, or excuse me, against uh, Chicago. But you, you look at this line of 16, and you think about how Saquon is used in this Giants offense. He could go over 16 fantasy points just on volume alone. He doesn't have to score a touchdown. He doesn't have to you know, be super, super efficient. He could just get 25 carries and six, seven, eight targets, and you know that alone might put him over 16 fantasy points. 
I want to talk about, you know, his touches so far this season and, you know, his involvement so far in this Giants offense. So first four games of the season, 24 touches, uh, 24 touches, 18 touches. And last week against the Bears, he got 33 touches. He's seen 18, 21, 14, and 31 carries, you know, through their four games. And then targets, he's seen seven, four, four, and two targets. It doesn't matter what the game script is. If the Giants are playing with the lead, they're you know just going to feed the ball to Saquon. If the Giants are playing from behind, they're going to throw the ball to Saquon. I mean, he's going to get involved in it either way. It doesn't matter what the game script is. And this is a matchup that I think Saquon can have some success in. Um, so far this season against the run, the Packers actually have been you know somewhat poor against the run this season. They are allowing the sixth most rushing yards to opposing running backs, uh, giving up 473 rushing yards to running backs this season. They've been about middle of the pack in other categories, like in terms of uh, rushing or in terms of like fantasy points allowed to running backs in terms of um, receptions they're about middle of the pack but they have been giving up a lot of rushing yards to running backs and you look at Saquon's props like across the board um, you know you look at his rushing yard props his receiving yard prop I mean he's projected for 77 and a half rushing yards he's projected for 26 receiving yards he's projected for four catches like you add all those numbers up and that's very very close to 16 fantasy points not even factoring in the potential for him to score a touchdown and we know Saquon is you know, he's a good bet to score a touchdown any week. If the Giants ever get down to the goal line, Saquon is going to be the guy punching it in. Um, he's going to be on the field for almost every single snap. Last four games th so far this season, 83% of the snaps, 84%, 92%. And last week he played 94% of the snaps. Like He's just going to be out there a ton. Um, they don't really have any other backups that they feel good giving snaps to. Matt Breida barely played last week. Gary Brightwell played just three snaps. Saquon's just going to be out there pretty much the whole game. He's going to get a massive volume, um, and that alone makes him makes this line stand out. You know, I feel like it doesn't matter what the matchup is. I feel like 16 fantasy points is too low for Saquon, especially factoring in that prize picks fantasy scoring is full PPR. You know, Saquon's just going to get so much opportunity that volume alone can put him over this line. And obviously, you know, if he gets into the end zone, he's almost certainly going to finish with more than 16 fantasy points. I feel really good about this play. I definitely thought this line was too low. Um, and I do look at some fantasy projections kind of across the industry. One of the sites that I look at for fantasy score for, for projections, they have Saquon projected for just over 19 fantasy points. So, you know, obviously, you know, when, when I look at those projections and I compare them to prize picks, you know, it's obviously nice to see there's a the big gap there as well. Um, but when I was looking at projections right out the gate, I, this one really stood out to me. Um, so we're going to go to that uh, London game as our first pick for today uh, for, for the Sunday slate. We're going to take Saquon Barkley to have more than 16 fantasy points. Uh, then the other two plays I like are both going to come from the same team. And we're going to kind of correlate a little bit here. Uh, we're going to talk about Marcus Mariota. And one prop I like for Marcus Mariota is for him to have more than 193 and a half passing yards. Um, this is a definitely a low number. You know, obviously this Falcons offense, they're not that good. Um, they haven't been able to move the ball down the field very well this season. Um, they haven't been putting up a ton of points. But 193 passing yards for Mariota feels more than doable here, especially in a game where they are probably going to be trailing. Uh, right now, the Falcons are, you know, they're expect they're going to be playing on the road in Tampa Bay, and they are du pretty much double-digit underdogs right now. Um, in, in this game, uh, the Bucks are favored by 10, so the Falcons are 10-point underdogs. This game does have a pretty high 46.5 total. If the Falcons are playing from behind here, that alone it just makes this prop appealing. You know, Mar Marcus Mariota, he could have like a mediocre game and still throw for, you know, 194, 195 yards just because I could see them in the second half just having to throw the ball. I mean, they could they could be down, you know, two, three touchdowns in the second half and Mariota just has to drop back. Um, you know, I think the Falcons, they are a team that probably wants to run the ball as much as possible, but they're going to be without their starting running back this week. Cordell Patterson's already been ruled out. So that's, it's going to be like Tyler Allegier, Caleb Huntley running the ball. And I don't know if those guys are going to be very efficient on the ground. You know, this Tampa Bay team has historically been pretty good against the run so far this season in terms of, you know, rushing yards allowed to running backs. Uh, Tampa Bay allowing 366 rushing yards to running backs, which is, which is about middle of the pack. In terms of rushing attempts, um, they've been about middle of the pack in that category as well. But I know last season, Tampa Bay was a big pass funnel. You basically, if you wanted to have success on Tampa Bay's defense, you basically had to throw just because, you know, they were so good at stopping the run. That could be the case here with, with Atlanta. Like, I don't see Atlanta having a ton of success running the ball. I think they're going to have to throw. And I think game script is going to force them to throw. I do expect them to be playing from behind here. Uh, right now, DraftKings Sportsbook, they have Marcus Mariota's passing yard prop set at 202 and a half. Um, obviously, Prize Picks has it at 193 and a half. So we're getting a little bit of a discount there as well. Honestly, that 202 and a half number on DraftKings, I, I wouldn't even be surprised if that number gets bumped up even more, especially if uh, you know other people start betting this. 
Um, so I do like this play quite a bit. Just going to really bank on the volume for Mariota. I think he's going to have to throw here. I think the Falcons are going to be playing from behind. And I don't really see you know Atlanta having much success running a, running the ball against this Tampa Bay defense. Tampa Bay has always been really stout against the run. And you know Atlanta is going to be without their number one running back. Um, so that's the, the second play that I like. And then to correlate, to pair with that, we're going to be taking another Atlanta player. We're going to be talking about Drake London. And I like Drake London to have more than 11 fantasy points this week. Um, I think this correlates you know, somewhat well with Marcus Mariota. You could take London to have more than 60 and a half receiving yards, but so far this season, London, he's only cleared 60 and a half receiving yards in two out of their four games, whereas fantasy score, he's cleared in three out of the four games. So that's kind of why I lean fantasy score. Also, I feel like if Drake London gets 61 yards, he's probably getting 11 fantasy points too, unless he just has like two catches for 61 yards or something, which I would say is pretty unlikely to happen. So 11 fantasy points, you know, this is a line that also stood out to me as being way too low. Looking at the projections that I use, that I look at, they have Drake London projected for just over 15 fantasy points. Um, so there's definitely a, a difference there. And the reason I like this play, for one, Kyle Pitts has already been ruled out for the Falcons. So you're taking away basically the number two option for Marcus Mariota. So far this season, when you look at the target share for Atlanta, Kyle Pitts has the second highest target share on the Falcons offense, 24.5% target share. Drake London leads the team with a 35.25% target share. Drake London is just getting massive volume so far this season. Um, through their four games, he has averaged, I believe, almost nine targets per game. Um, yeah, he's averaged, you know, or he's averaged eight targets per game through their four games. He's seen seven, 12, six, and seven targets. Um, you know, he's put up over 11 fantasy points in three out of their four games. And now without Kyle Pitts, you, you would expect the volume to be pretty big for Drake London here. Like he probably will get eight, nine, ten targets. I think, again, I think Atlanta is going to have to throw the ball here. I don't see them have, having much success running the ball. And I do expect that when Marcus Mariota throws the ball, he's going to be looking for Drake London. Drake London has been his number one option this season. He's been the guy that he's gone to the most. And now without Kyle Pitts, they're going to have probably lean on Drake London any uh, even more. Now, you could argue that, you know, obviously Tampa Bay, they knows that, Tampa Bay probably knows that Drake London is the number one option for Marcus Mariota. So does Tampa Bay try and double team Drake London or something like that? It's possible. I mean, there's this Atlanta team outside of London, especially without Kyle Pitts, like they just don't have any other weapons. You're looking at guys like Olamide, Zacchaeus. I mean, Cordell Patterson's injured. I mean, I don't even know who, what other receivers Atlanta has outside of Zacchaeus. Um, that's how much like I, I don't even pay attention to this team outside of Pitts and in, in or Pitts in uh, Pitts in London because we know when Marcus Mariota is throwing the ball, he's looking for Pitts in London. He doesn't really look to anyone else. But they have Zacchaeus. They have like. Kaderil Hodge, but man, like you would think, you would think if Marcus Mariota throws the ball like 30, 35 times here, you're probably getting 10, 11, 12 targets for Drake London. And 11 fancy points is a line that he can easily hit. Like if he gets into the end zone, you know, not saying he will, but if he scores a touchdown this week, he's almost certainly going to finish with more than 11 fancy points. Um, and, and volume alone just makes this play appealing. Very similar to the Saquon play. Um, I don't think Saquon needs to score a touchdown to go over 16 fancy points. I don't think Drake London needs to score a touchdown to go over 11 fantasy points. They could just get so much opportunity that you know, volume alone puts them over those numbers. So that's the three plays, or those are the three plays that I like for Sunday, guys. Saquon Barkley, they have more than 16 fantasy points. Marcus Mariota to have more than 193.5 passing yards. And Drake London to have more than 11 fantasy points. Feel pretty good about these three plays. Um, you know, I feel always feel good about the plays I give out to you guys, but I definitely, I definitely like these three plays quite a bit. Um, and hopefully we can cash out on Sunday. Hopefully we can hit all three of these plays, get a clean sweep. Um, if you guys want to run all these together as a power play, you do get 5x your payout, um, 5x your money if all three plays hit. If you do want to play it safe, you can always do a flex play, which is basically uh, guarantees that even if you get a pick wrong, you could still get a little bit of money. You would still get 1.25x your money. And if you do get all three picks right, you would still get 2.25x. So you could do a flex play. You could also mix and match. You could do different two-pick entries. You could do a two-pick entry with Barkley and Mariota. Do a two-pick entry with Barkley and London. Unfortunately, you can't do just two picks from the same team. Um, so you couldn't do Mariota and London as just one entry. But you know, Barkley, Mariota, Barkley, London, you could do some two-pick entries like that. Totally up to you, but I hope to hit all three of these plays. Um, hopefully, they all come through for us. But that's what I'm liking for, for Sunday, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I hope it did help. If you enjoyed, hit that like button down below. If you have not yet, hit that subscribe button as well. Make sure to check out Prize Picks. Sign up for Prize Picks. Use promo code NOAA. Get that deposit bonus when you do sign up. 
And also, if you want more prospects plays from me, I do provide those over on Patreon. I give out a list of plays that I'm on for the day um, with a full write-up for each play. Also, give out more DFS content. So for DraftKings, for Yahoo, I'm posting core plays. You're, you're able to get in our Discord chat too, which you know gives you access to um, you know, our community where you can talk to me. You can talk to any other members that are in Discord. I'm always in Discord to answer any questions you guys have. If you want to check out the Patreon, $20 per month gets you access to everything that I provide over there. Check it out if you're interested. But good luck this week, guys. Thanks as always for watching the videos, for supporting the channel. Hope you guys win some money. And, you know, let's, let's, try, and, let's try and hit all three of these plays. But good luck this week, guys. We'll see you in the next video.